Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Our first section is covering 15.9 usability improvements. We'll cover a few things here. First of which is um, the ability to change the out of the box menu colors. Specifically, you can set a background color for the Modern UX left hand navigation menu and the login page. And you can either select a, a light or dark a format for those icons or the text that's presented in, in the menu and the icon. Another feature here was quick save as a companion or part of save views. It's quite simple. If you make a change to the page in view, a save button becomes available and you click save and you're really removing multiple clicks that have been there historically to perform that same task. We've also improved our drop down behavior. There's kind of three quality of life uh, improvements there. One is within the drop down when it's displayed to the user. So all the items that have been selected in, in a grouped in, in a grouped at the top of the listing in the case of a MBL or a multi value lookup. Secondly, the uh, width of the pull down itself is dynamic based on the, the grid column width. And then depending if you're opening the uh, pull down at either the top or bottom, the system is smart enough now to position that drop up that pull down uh, properly. Another capability here is the ability to uh, when you're searching or filtering on a grid, for example, uh, use match all or match any. So match any is an or condition, which is new. The match all, which is an and condition, was basically what was available in the product uh, before we added the, the two different options here. And secondly, the second piece of this is when you use those capabilities, they are saved. That Those options are saved with so this is when you use those capabilities, they are saved. That Those options are saved with the view. Three more things here that are part of this uh, section is date standardization and, and support of localization. So dates can be entered in whatever format a user prefers. And um, also from a display perspective, that um, the, the system will display the date format using the individual's uh, locale setting. Uh, the, another one here is quite simple. It's a simple idea. It's just display an inactive tag for a project, an idea, or a custom investment type if it, in fact, is inactive. This is the foundation for our, our business rules capabilities that will be evolving. But in this go around, it's really that simple idea as mentioned. The last thing button from the timesheet create page. It's pretty straightforward there. So users don't inadvertently create timesheets. So those are the multiple items that we're going to be covering in more detail here as part of the usability improvements. So let's talk about why why we did these. So the first item is the, the changing the out of the box menu colors. Many customers have been asking for the request, or they've been requesting the ability to change these menu colors for two things. One was to uh, match their branding guidelines. And the second is, and the most prominent use case, is to help users kind of visually differentiate between a production and an, a lower environment, like a development or QA environment. So we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. The save views. Again, uh, we want to um, continue to evolve the solution to help drive adoption. So this improvement does away with the multiple clicks that were required to save a view after a change was made to that view. That in view, regardless of how insignificant or significant, whether you change the column width or you removed or added attributes, um, this quick save takes that um, workflow that was down there to a single click. I'll show you that in a minute. The improved drop down behavior, as I mentioned, these are really quality of life improvements to help drive adoption. But more importantly, providing users with a consistent, well, with an experience that's consistent with other applications. The uh, match all or match any 
again, it draw, it's been instituted or delivered to help drive adoption. Customers have asked for greater flexibility when searching for and retrieving information to help them do some analysis. The date standardization and localization capability, again, was also um, put in place to help drive adoption. And it's going to, you know, users expect the system to consistently display dates in a format that respects their locale. So we've done our best to ensure that wherever a date is displayed, it's displayed in a consistent manner. And obviously prior to this, there were some inconsistencies. Also, from a, a date entry or kind of inputting date entry for information, they wanted that to be more flexible. So you could uh, implement that in whatever form, whether you're using a slash, a space, a dash, um, a period. We want to just provide a lot more flexibility as far as date entry is performed that results in consistent display. Consistent display. The ability to for the system to pro, you know provide a tag or a visual indicate indicator of an inactive indicator of an inactive investment a project a custom investment or an idea customers said hey it's really difficult to tell from within a selected investment if that thing is inactive at least not easy anyway of course you can scroll through a properties page and if that attribute you know active, quote unquote, active is presented or configured in the properties page. Obviously, if, if it's unchecked, you'll be able to tell if it's inactive. If you've included the active attribute in a grid, that's another way of doing it, but not everyone does that. So this was just uh, quite simple. Put a tag up there at the top of the uh, investment to indicate its state. And in this case, active, or inactive. So as I mentioned, this is a, a foundational element towards delivering business uh, a business rules engine. The way this was implemented, you know, obviously the result is very straightforward. It's just a tag or there's no tag. You know, obviously the result is very straightforward. It's just a tag or there's no tag. But the way this was implemented um, behind the scenes gives us a foundational framework uh, towards delivering a, a more complex or comprehensive, say complex, comprehensive business rules engine. Timesheet create is, is very straightforward, but in some cases customers would or users would land on that timesheet create page and inadvertently um, submit their timesheets with no data. So that caused some you know unnecessary and unwanted administration work that had to um, go on behind the scenes to clean all that up. So we alleviated that by simply removing the button from that page. So let's kind of run through some visuals here that that um, talk a little bit more detail uh, about the particular uh, capability. So the the ability to change some of the pages was dedicated to inserting uh, a, a company logo or an icon to brand the use of Clarity. Uh, you know, essentially removing Clarity PPM or adding something that's more personal. So the lower section is dedicated to uh, a background color, uh, meaning the left-hand navigation or something that's behind the logo. Um, you can add anything that supports CSS in terms of a hex, RGB, or HSL, or even type in the word red or green, and it will pick that up. The other aspect of this is kind of a, a, a foreground color. Do you want the icons on the left-hand side to be light or dark? Do you want the logo itself to be presented in light or dark? And I'll show some examples of that in a second. Quick save. The left-hand side describes the current, uh, sorry, the 15.15.8.1 workflow. Let's say you add two new attributes to your grid, or even more simply, if you just extend or reduce the column width to make it a little more presentable. The view goes into an unsafe state. So at that point, you have to select the drop down menu. Click Save As. Confirm the name or save the name, even if you don't want to change the name whatsoever. Then you have to confirm that you actually want to make that final save. So essentially four clicks, right? So it's a 
it's a, a if you're doing this quite often, it, it can be time consuming or uh, somewhat annoying. On the right hand side, the if consider the same scenario whether you've extended or reduced a column width or you've added or removed multiple attributes from a particular grid the view moves into an ex italic state really simple now to create or actually save the view or something a page that you've got in front of you that you just, you just change so it's quite simple moving on to the improved drop down behavior so I've got an example here of a uh, multi-value lookup with um, alphabetical, uh, number of alphabetical ordered items. The first thing I want to point out is the dynamic sizing of the pull-down itself. You'll note here, for example, the column width is positioned just above that search box. So the column, when you close the pull-down, the column width is fairly narrow. However, when you open up pull down the uh, there is a default size for that pull down width the second thing is um, here is the items that are selected the second thing is um, here is the items that are selected are presented at the top of the listing and highlighted on the far right the uh, the pull down is auto positioned uh, when the listing is opened up near or near the bottom or near the top of the screen. So all of these items are in line with other enterprise applications. So our UX team has done a really good job of understanding the user needs and, and taking these into account. The new, new capabilities for match all or match any. So in the upper right of the screen here, We've got uh, match all is selected. And so this is essentially an and condition. And, and um, was the default capability of the product before inserting these two options. So in using the examples here, if I'm going to look for an idea with low, I'm looking return from the system to include ideas with low priority and they're not active and their financial status is on hold. So the list here is going to focus on the, all those the all those all those conditions must be met. From an match, Just uh, from a match any perspective, this is an or actually a new capability that's um, applied. So I've I'm in this case I want to have again my idea of priority being low or it's active, it's not active, or its financial status is on financial status is on hold. So, so in, in the, just to close out on this particular piece, um, this allows more flexibility. You can have the system look for any condition here, so you're using the OR. All right, uh, date standardization and localization. In the upper right of the screen, we've got this concept of a long, long and short form. Uh, the, the left hand example using the French, uh, locale, the French uh, locale for the individual. It's a long form and then a short form on the right. So that's the first part. Uh, the second is, uh, just recognizing that now wherever date is, uh, required or expected to be included in a grid, a flyout, what have you, um, or a filter. It'll present in, in the in the locale and or the format. Now again, from a, a date entry perspective, there's a lot of format. Now again, from a, a date entry perspective, there's a lot of flexibility. When you're entering date, uh, the user is you know their mindset is typically in the locale, so they're used to doing one October 2020, but they may want to use a space in between the term, uh, the, the different entry types, uh, a slash, a period, or a dash, or a hyphen, if you will. So it's flexible from a data input perspective. Re regardless of how you input the data, it'll come out and be presented in either the long or short form. Visual indicator if, if a, an investment is inactive. Again, it's fairly straightforward. It's right there as you navigate across the different modules. 
it's going to be presented to the user that this is inactive. You don't have to put some investments and ideas. This is a fairly straightforward uh, rule. MC create, again, is another fairly straightforward uh, change. However, it's going to save our customers, in some cases, a lot of timesheet entry. So left side is the prior release. I'm on my create timesheet page, and you can see the submit button is presented in the upper right. And on the right-hand side is the new 15.9 uh, create timesheet page. Obviously, the, low, the, the submit button person can't submit a blank timesheet. And they don't get the submit button until they actually generate their timesheet or you know, entering in days or hours, what have you, for their assigned task. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is move on to the demonstration for this. I'm not going to read everything on the slide here, but we're going to cover off on um, left nav, or sorry, the colors, the quick save, the improved drop down behavior, the and or or. Uh, filtering, capabilities, the date formatting updates, and um, just a quick touch on uh, the in case, the date formatting updates, and um, just a quick touch on uh, the inactive tag being applied, and then the updated to the create timesheet page. All right, so let me end the show here. Okay. All right. So I've landed here, I've logged in, I've landed on our projects list. Uh, the first thing I want to do is demonstrate the uh, this collection of usability improvements, and the first one being changing the out-of-the-box menu colors. So this is behind administration on the left-hand navigation under system settings. Now, the, let me shrink this down just a little bit. The upper part of the screen was here in prior release, which of course allowed you to um, upload a logo to for the login page and of course the upper left of the page. The bottom part of the screen is um, the theme has been added. So the first part of branding is the ability to pick a color for the modern UX navigation menu and the Clarity login page. The second choose a light or dark coloring for those icons. So you can see here in the background color section, I've got a default, which is our blue and white blue. And then on the right hand side is the foreground. So that's our, our uh, coloring. I'll just quickly select dark here and you'll see the logo change colors and the uh, the icons themselves are black now, which we're not going to tell you that that's a bad choice. You're going to have to make that assessment on your own. So now I switched it back to the default and it lightens up. So first thing I'm going to do is just put in um, an RGB coloring. You enter the number in the expected format and there it's click out and it's presented. Now, obviously, the light background is really not that visual for us, so I'm going to change that to dark, and that actually works pretty good. I like that. So if that was my company's tool for us, so I'm going to change that to dark, and that actually works pretty good. I like that. So if that was my company's uh, color, uh, branding color scheme, then I'd be in good shape. Let's just continue along here for a few more examples here up to an HSL uh, color. It's a little bit darker green. Again, I can play around with that foreground color. I think dark is the best. Another example here is just to put in a hex. Let me put in uh, formatting of the pound um, FF69B4. I'll click out. There's my mouse. And that's a pretty cool one. A little hot pink there. And I can make, play around with the formatting and choose whichever I see fit. Uh, another thing I can do here is if I just want to type in the word red, right? Click out. It's going to just make its change. It recognizes that. I could type in green, right? Oops, if I spelled it right. Type in green and it's going to change that. Pick my, my light coloring. So there's a lot of flexibility here to help, help customers. You know, institute something that in line with their branding, 
using RGBA, you know, HSL or HEX, where they can get very detail oriented and specific to their uh, company brand, um, and, and then adjust the foreground color uh, for those things as well. Um, so there's the branding requirement or branding aspects of this. The other is just people know that if they go into a green system, that's their lower uh, non-production environment, right? So I'm going to change these back to default for the balance of our demonstration. And I'm going to move on to one more usability improvement here related to um, save use, the quick save. So I'm going to come back to something that uh, basically eliminates multiple clicks to simply save uh, content to the page currently in view. So I'm going to come to my uh, PMO view here. Um, and, but uh, I'm going to come here to, I'll go to my high risk view. You'll notice that on, oh, I guess I can pump this up a little bit. On the right hand side, I've got my active column. You can't really tell um, because it's got the ellipses there. It's under field level security. That's great. I'm going to just expand that a little bit so I can read it. You'll notice that the view went to italics and save, uh, and the save button became active. So I'm just going to hit save and I'm done, right? I've now changed that view and it's it's good to go. So let's come back to, um, actually, one other thing I wanted to do here is I'm going to shrink the size of this. It's a little too tight for me. Uh, I'm going to shrink this back down, right? And do it's going to, again, change the italics and save. If I go back to my other view, it's going to say, hey, do you want to make these changes or not? If I hit this card, it's going to ignore the change, as you would expect. And or if I hit save, it's going to save that change. Now, regardless of which direction, uh, which option I pick, it's going to take me back to that view that I selected. So it's going to save as I leave or ignore, depending on uh, what I want. So that's another uh, kind of important usability improvement there. Um, as another example, I'll just come in here. I'll remove uh, the blueprint field in this view, and you can see my italics has come into play, and I've, I can now just hit save, and now I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and add, and now I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and add that back just for fun, uh, hit save, and go ahead and um, kind of, whoops, and remove both blueprint and etc right i'm going to do that i've got my italics mode and then save but i want to save this as another view so the save as workflow hasn't changed i still have to go through these series of steps it's very deliberate right i'm changing it uh, to another perspective so I want to point out that save as remains the same. Now, these V2 showed up as a favorite, right? Just as you would expect, anything that I save off. And even though I was changing this view to um, eliminate columns, et cetera, the, um, it remained as a default, right? Whether I, I created it and made it a default, or it was created as a default by someone else and pushed it. So none of that. Uh, none of that uh, capability has changed in this release, just to point that out. All right, so let's move on to another usability improvement, the improved drop-down behavior. Um, let me just come into my uh, another view here that I've got is our PMO call sign view. I want to call your attention to the call sign column that's over here. I'm going to double-click into the, this mod, this project. And you'll notice that the uh, first thing into the, this mod, this project, and you'll notice that the uh, first thing, all selected items are at the top of the view, or sorry, top of the listing, and uh, colorized. So big, big improvement there. Uh, that's number one. Number two is the default width of this um, pull down itself. Right, it's certainly expanding beyond the width of the of the column. I can just come in here and I get my default width. 
Uh, I'm going to scroll down here. Notice this one that takes up more real estate that's, that's been allocated through the configuration includes ellipses, the uh, full content of that pull down. Um, as I expand column width, the pull down menu itself expands. So that's number two. Um, the third piece is um, I'm going to you know, play around with this. I'm going to shrink the size of the page up to, I guess, uh, we'll come to network security right here. So I'm going to click into this pull down and it's going to um, go upwards so it's not down off the page out of view, possibly. So I can do my work. And this is an example of a multi-value lookup behaving properly. Uh, you can also see one here, a single value lookup is also doing the same, same thing. So uh, that's, that's number three. So let's move on to um, another usability improvement, the, the filtering using match all or match any. I'm just going to come back to... Um, my view here at the top, my PMO view, this card changes. And I'm going to click on the filter, and that brings up the new filter option types, uh, match all and match any. Now remember, match all was the capability, that's the and capability. That was what basically was instituted without any choice uh, by default prior to this release. And then um, match any is the new kind of or capability. So what I want to do here is uh, first point out that in this view with match all selected, I've got 20 items. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add another filter type. I'm going to pick um, uh, project type. Project type. I'm going to pick major. And get out of this. And it's going to further refine and bring back 10 results, right? Because it's doing a major project and not part of a template. And um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to OR, which is a match any. And now I'm, I'm back to 29 entries. So much more flexible. It's looking for show me anything that meets. You know, this major project type, or it's not from a template, or it's or it's active. Um, if I want, I'm going to add another filter here to uh, work status, and I'm going to select land. And the, notice the total number again doesn't change because um, it's again it's looking for anything that m meets these any one of these criteria. If I switch to match all. It's going to say it's got to meet all of these criteria simultaneously. So again, we're getting a much reduced set, right? Three items. Anyway, that's I can save. You know, using these um, filter types, I match all, match any. I can use that and save my view, and it's maintained. So just another piece of the information or filter criteria that's saved with the view. So let's move on to another one. Uh, date, date, uh, date standardization and localization. So let's come back to my uh, PMO view. This card goes changes. I've got my 20 items here. So this is all about presenting information in the format that you prefer. So let's look at our start and finish dates here. June 6, comma, 20, June, comma, 2020. Uh, and that's our long format. So how do we change that? So I go up into settings. Look at that. Go up into settings. Settings. General. And here's my two format types. You'll see November 9th. That's a function of today's date. And I've got my long form and short form. I'm going to select the short form from a US, English United States locale. And now the, the all the grid, in this case, the grid is updated to display that local format. Um, now, the, the key word that I'm using here is localized. Let me go back and change this to or locale, I should say. 
change that to a quote unquote long form and it updates. Now I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, locale. So I'm going to go into classic here, home uh, account settings, and I'll just do a simple change from English US to English UK. Still English, so I can figure it out from a demo perspective that the formatting is in fact different. I'll refresh my browser here. And, oh, I didn't hit save. Hello. Save on classic and come back and refresh my browser. And as the grid comes up, you're going to notice that the formatting um, is different using the user's locale. Again, I've got the long form sitting here. So I'm going to kind of the long form sitting here. So I'm going to kind of highlight this or come into here and I'm going to go into my task here and I'm going to open up the flyout and you'll see the same formatting is also um, displayed for the user. Uh, let me get into the timeline a little more interesting. Uh, in initiating press complete and here's my format. So um, just while I'm in this format, I just wanted to show that the um, input formats are pretty flexible. So I've got, I'm using a space here in between the three elements that go into a date. I'm going to just using this locale, I'll do 6, 6, 20. I'm just going to do a data. That's my best way I like to do it. And it's going to take that and uh, refresh and then put it right back. Oops, where am I just keeping it? Let me do um, 6, 8, 20. Please update. Yes, so see, it, it used 6 as the um, date, and I put in 8 right as the month, and so it's just going to remember that. So if I wanted to change this out to 8 dash 6 dash 20, Right, it's going to use my format that I preferred. I've shown an example of how I entered in a space. I used a dash or a, a slash. I used a hyphen. It's allowing me to input that information in whatever format I prefer in the context of my locale. So, for example, if I wanted to type in here, um, you know, obviously I've got my mindset of uh, United States, English, United States. I'm going to put in uh, 12 dash 6 20, uh, 12 dash 6 20, December 6, 2020. The system's going, wait a minute. I'm still operating in the context of the UK locale. So it's just going to put 12 June 20, right? So it just, it's, you got to enter the dates in your, in the locale or format. It's just not going to override it based on uh, what you're doing. So it's, Obviously, a user is entering dates in their locale. Their mindset is that locale, and it's going to respect if you use a dash, a hyphen, what have you. So a lot of flexibility there uh, with respect to date um, formatting and um, date entry. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back for the rest of the demo to English United States. Hit save, come back, and refresh my browser. And we're going to move on to um, the visual indicator for um, I'll show you the project example here. Obviously, it applies to ideas and, excuse me, custom investments uh, as well. So I'm going to come back to my PMO view. Um, right now, my filter criterion is set to active. I'm going to change it to no. And it should pull back a few examples, a few entries where the state is inactive. Now, I don't have the, the grid in view, doesn't have any of this information here. Um, I haven't included that attribute. So again, it's, it's not quickly, it's not easily discernible to me that this is an inactive other than my filter. But I'll click into it and you just see the inactive state is displayed at the top of the page. Scrolling down on the properties page, this has been renamed from details. We'll cover that tomorrow. Um, active is unchecked, of course. I'm going to go ahead and check the box. Remote. I'll just recheck it, put myself back into uh, where it's expected to be. 
and the uh, inactive tag shows up. So as again, this is supported on projects, ideas, and custom investment types. Uh, this is a fairly simple um, uh, capability, but like I mentioned, it's the foundation based on our implementation of this feature for um, more advanced um, business rules that are coming in the future. So I'm going to come back out. Let's cover another uh, feature. Uh, the timesheet create, hiding that submit button. This card will change. All right, so I'm back in my view. So let's go into uh, timesheets. So again, I'm a particular user, Ian. I'm going to click on timesheets. I'm on a particular period here, current period. Key thing here is oh, I don't have a submit button anywhere active. I'm going to go to an older release, just active. I'm going to go to an older release just to show you. And of course, it timed out. Um, here I am on timesheet page in 15.8.1. And, you know, in addition to creating my timesheet, I've got this submit button here that in some cases cause users to inadvertently submit timesheets uh, with no data. So here I'll come back to 15.9. I'm going to, you know, copy, create my timesheet. It's going to create a bunch of data and there's my submit button. So I'm in a state now where I'm, I know what I'm doing as a user and not inadvertently submitting you know, blank stuff. All right. So that's the, the um, end of the demonstration part for this section.